Hey there everyone, my name is Brad Talton. I'm the founder of Level 99 Games and the creator of 7 Card Slugfest and I'd like to take a few minutes to tell you about 7 Card Slugfest and teach you how to play. Now, this game plays 3 to 8 players, about 30 minutes, and it simulates a real-time chaotic barroom brawl where you and your friends will all be fighting simultaneously willy-nilly, no holds barred, and no turns uh, to see who could score the most knockouts and become the ultimate barroom brawler. Well, let's take a look inside the box. Inside the game 7 Card Slugfest, you'll find a rule book, four sheets of punch-out tokens, and two decks of cards. To begin playing, you'll need to punch out all of the punch boards and sort the relevant card set together with the base placard and character face. So, yard, yard. A character in Seven Card Slugfest has these um, different parts. First is a placard, which is their target for place, having opponent's cards, opponent's punches placed down on them. The second is a knockout token, and this symbolizes who knocked them out or if they survived the match, and is used to keep track of KO points. Finally, we have seven attack cards. Three of these are standard attacks that have no special effect, just some flavor text at the bottom. The other three are power cards. These do have a special effect, and the special effect differs based on what the character is. For example, Minyard here, when he plays a card with this symbol, his, other car, his next card floats to the top of the stack and combos with it. This means that it's easier for him to do large bursts of damage at once. The last card is a taunt, and each character's taunt has the number in red and has a coin up here at the top. These attacks all do one damage, and if you can knock somebody out with this taunt, for example, a character has 10 life, if this does the 10th point of damage and knocks him out, you immediately claim one victory point for scoring that knockout. And this is a free victory point, not a KO point, which counts towards the number of KOs for the match, but an actual VP that counts towards winning the entire game. To set up the game, each player selects a character, takes all seven of the punch cards associated with that character, and the character's face token. You will also need a selection of gold coins, which have damage markers on the back for those who wish to use those at the ready, and a selection of these drink tokens, which will be detailed in a chart in the rule book based on your player set count. The final step of preparation um, is to have your, uh, your encounter deck set up. So the first card is always the battle begins, this double-sided one. And then we take one stage four card, one stage three card, two stage two cards, and two stage one cards, and layer them like so, so that the stages move progressively from one up to four. That deck sits to the side, and the game is ready to start. In addition to our four player characters, we also have in the middle Boris, this neutral character, who provides double points when he is knocked out. Each player will take their card set in one hand, shuffle it lightly without looking, and at some random time, someone will shout fight. When that happens, the players begin playing immediately, picking up the top card of the deck, looking at it, and then playing it face down onto any of the four other targets at the table. At the end, of the round will end when everybody has played all of their cards. When you have played all of your cards out, grab the highest number drink token from the center of the table and keep it beside your character. So I'm just going to simulate a playthrough here. I should mention that everybody plays simultaneously as fast as you can. So players will be slapping cards left and right. Um, try to get the cards as close to the target as possible. Cards that fall out off to the side are just discarded with no effect. So keep that in mind. After each player has grabbed a drink token, everyone's finished playing, and then we move on to the resolution step. So now, after all of the drink tokens are taken and all the cards are played, we move on to the resolution step. To resolve a character, we, um, we neaten up all the cards on the character and flip them over. So the bottom card, the first card that was played, is now on top of the stack. Um, now, in the first game, when you're just learning, I like to resolve each character separately, one by one, and going around the table. 
But after you're experienced and have played the game once or twice, then you can um, you can just all resolve at once, and it makes the game play quite a bit faster. But anyway, let's see how resolution works. The person who does the ninth point of damage, everyone has ten life, but Pendros with this negative one drink token has nine life instead. So the person who does the ninth point of damage is going to knock him out and score a point. So this attack does four damage. And so we'll put one, two, three, four damage on Pendros here. Two damage. Now we reach a card with a special effect. About half the cards in the game have a special effect, and that varies, and that varies by character. So for example, if this is not the last card, move it below the next card. So it does its one point of damage, but instead of discarding it, we move it to the back, or below the next card. All right, this attack then does three damage, one, two, and then three, and that did our ninth point of damage. So we ignore the special effect and go straight to the uh, defeat. To defeat the rest of the cards uh, that are still down here have no more effect because the character's already been knocked out, and we give this token, the victory point token, to the character who scored the knockout. If, for example, you don't get knocked out, like uh, O'Brien here only has four cards, and so let's see, one, two three, four, five, survives the round, he will keep his own token as a point for himself. So we'll go around the table, we'll resolve everybody's attacks, and I'll just pretend that, uh, that this is the way things played out. At the end of the round, we've distributed all of the, the knockouts. Everyone knows who knocked out everyone else, and we count up total knockout points. One of these is worth one knockout point, and Boris, our bartender, is worth two knockout points. So O'Brien here has a total of three, uh, Minyard, two, and then Pendros has one. So the first player for this round, first place is O'Brien, second place Minyard, and third place Pendros. In this particular round, the battle card will tell us what, uh, what the payouts are for winning. First place gets two, to two coins, so these are two VPs. Second place gets one VP, third place unfortunately gets nothing out of this whole out of this whole affair. Then the round is over, everyone returns all their cards, we discard this arena, and we reveal the new one and read it out. This one says all cards are played face up during this round, which will give you a better idea of who's using their special powers and when. You'll play through uh, similar again with each arena having a new effect, and the effects become more, more uh, involved and the rewards become uh, become greater as you get lower and lower in the deck until we get to stage four, which is generally um, a giant bonus boss round of some sort. Thanks so much for taking the time to watch this short tutorial on 7-Card Slugfest. I hope that you and your friends have a great time with it. Happy gaming!